Today on The Caucus, Megan Lieberman and Trip Gabriel discuss Michelle Bachman's official entry into the 2012 race. Also, Kirk Johnson reports on the role of Mitt Romney and John Huntsman's Mormon faith on the ground in Utah and around the country. My name is Michelle Bachman. I stand here in the midst of many friends and many family members to announce formally my candidacy for President of the United States. So, Chip, this seems to be the election cycle where every presidential candidate has to announce, like, at least three or four times. So, <laughs> Michelle Bachman made her official, official announcement this morning in Waterloo. That's right. It reminds me of a modern wedding. It's like a three-day affair now. She announced uh, that she was running uh, two weeks ago now in New Hampshire during the first presidential debate, and today she made it official again in Iowa, and this is the start of a three-state swing up to New Hampshire and back to South Carolina, where she will you know, collectively announce that she's in the, in the game officially. It's, of course, not a coincidence that she's announcing in Waterloo, Iowa, which is both the town of her birth, but also a pretty key state for her, right? The caucuses are traditionally uh, sort of a hotbed for uh, social conservatives, and, uh, and, and Michelle Bachman has um, cultivated and generated that uh, kind, that of, kind support of support all along. Yeah. yeah, and she's sort of looking to run kind of the same route that Huckabee did in, in 2008, which is to sort of steal the Iowa caucuses and then run this insurgent streak after that, right? If that is her model, and it could well be, uh, she's already ahead of the game. I mean, there was a, a poll that came out this weekend, the first uh, official poll by the Des Moines Register of the election uh, cycle, and it had her and uh, Mitt Romney in a statistical tie for uh, first place. And we know that these polls at this stage are, are, are quite unreliable, if not actually meaningless in fact, but she is really on a roll. She has been since the New Hampshire debate. She was on the, the weekend shows with Chris Wallace on Fox News, which got a lot of attention. Are you a flake? Well, I think that would be insulting to say something like that because I'm a serious person. Um, but I, you understand when I say that, that that's what the, the rap on you is. You know, it was a blunt and fairly candid um, voicing of uh, what's on a lot of people's minds about Michelle Bachman. Is she a uh, bomb-throwing uh, candidate from uh, the far fringe of her party, or is she... Um, does she have more uh, mainstream appeal and, and, and more broader uh, political maturity? And that's the impression that she gave uh, during the, the debate in New Hampshire, where she had a very smooth performance. And that's what we've seen you know, uh, nationally ever since then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another person who's had this same question asked about her is, of course, Sarah Palin, who also, in, in, in true to form, has sort of followed Michelle Bachman into Iowa on the heels of her announcement. She did the same thing to Mitt Romney uh, on the day of Mitt Romney's announcement in New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago. Sarah Palin's East Coast bus tour just happened to touch a little corner of uh, New Hampshire and, and upstate Imagine Canada the news. coincidence. And, and now tomorrow uh, she's scheduled to appear in Iowa at a, a screening of a, uh, a very flattering documentary about her called The Undefeated. It almost seems like there's this question of whether there could actually be two Republican women in this race, right? I think it's less, you know, is, is the field big enough to have, have, have two uh, female candidates and the fact that they both appeal uh, to the same uh, constituency broadly. It's a, it's a very socially conservative uh, constituency. It's a Tea Party movement um, constituency. And I think Iowa will be a natural place for them to, um, to have a showdown. Both Mitt Romney and John Huntsman are extremely popular in Utah. Both are Mormons in an overwhelmingly Mormon state. And that is setting up uh, a, a dynamic of the race in a big way, both in tapping fundraising sources, but also deeper founts of, of popularity and, and religious sentiment as well. Uh, Mr. Huntsman said in an interview last year with Fortune magazine that he was not overly religious. In Utah, that plays on some very interesting notes. There are people I've spoken to who say that Mr. Huntsman's statements about his faith have rubbed them the wrong way. On the other hand, there are cultural Mormons who could be drawn to that kind of position that faith perhaps should not be completely central to politics. Nationally, it's a little more complicated still. Some political experts say Mr. Huntsman's statements about his faith could help him with a national audience that is in many respects wary of Mormonism, if not antagonistic. But how it plays at home is going to be its, uh, its own issue. Both Mr. Romney and Mr. Huntsman are, are, are going to be going after the money in Utah. Another thing to watch in the coming months is how the national mood might have shifted 
about the idea of, of Mormonism and public life in general. If you talk to the Romney supporters in, in the Romney camp, their belief is that things have moved, that he has become a familiar figure. He's no longer Mitt Romney the Mormon, but as Mitt Romney, a figure who ran for president last time, the sense of Mormonism and, or Mormon as a label that comes before anything else could be fading with these other images that are, that are happening of, of Mormons in, in public life.